Hey guys, it's Ruckus Gaming here, coming at you with another episode of Tuesday Tips and Tricks. Today is going to be the second installment of What the Hell is Up With That? A series where I look to find those difficult, confusing, or intimidating cards that beginners often shy away from choosing from because they're not sure how to make it work, and I try to make it work, and hopefully that will give you guys some knowledge that you can go out and start picking those cards, putting the pieces together, and having good runs. Today we're going to be looking at Wraith Form. So I want to be very honest here, I am not the best silent player in the world, and Wraith Form is one of those cards that I often would skip because I just wasn't quite sure when exactly would be a good time to take it or what I should be looking for. And I would usually just skip it, even though I know a lot of other great players love this card and take it quite often. So I think this was a learning experience for me and hopefully I can pass some of that on to you guys. So we've got the run history here and what we're gonna do, I'm just quickly going to pick out a few of the most important pieces, cards and relics. Then I will show you some clips particularly from the end of Act 3 and into Act 4. And then at the end, I'll talk more about some things that could have helped, but I didn't have missing pieces that you could also keep an eye out for. To begin, looking at this deck, one thing that is a little bit different about Wraith Form is that this is not going to be a Wraith Form deck. That doesn't really exist. That doesn't make sense. Wraith Form is just a support card that can be fit into many decks, much in the same way that something like Echo Form can for the Defect, or Corruption can for Ironclad. At its core, this is a Shiv deck. I've got Phantasmal Killer, I've got my Accuracy, and I've got Blade Dance, I've got the Terror in there somewhere, don't I? Yeah, Terror's right there. So this is a Shiv deck. This is not a Wraith form deck. But there are a couple cards in here that I think are worth talking about and a couple relics that are worth talking about just focusing on the aspect of Wraith form. To begin, just saying a little bit more about Wraith form. Obviously, intangible is great. You can think of this almost like infinite block for three turns. Two unupgraded. This can even last through things like the Blasphemy damage if you uh, had a Prismatic Shard on the Watcher. It will just stop everything. Clearly we know why it's good, but it is the second half, half, second half of the card that makes it scary. Losing Dexterity is very intimidating because once you go below zero, you're going to have a hard time blocking anything and we're gonna see how that works out in my run. What ways I use to deal with that. And a lot of it honestly just comes down to timing. If you've got intangible for a couple turns, that will probably get you through most hallway fights. Elite fights or boss fights, you do need to be a little bit more careful and it's where the knowledge about specific enemies and their mechanics will come in handy. And also just the general feel of how long does your deck take to kill something, which obviously can be very, very different. So I can't say that there's one hard and fast rule about when to use it. You do have to kind of feel it out a bit. Other cards that were amazing this run, I think Outmaneuver was really good. Basically just for the energy, of course. Wraith Form is a very, very expensive card to play. And another one of the reasons why I think a lot of people don't choose it is they often feel like I'm spending all of my energy on one turn to do nothing, kind of. I mean, if you get it on a big attack turn, it feels really good. But you wouldn't want to spend a turn where the enemy is debuffing to use it so you could avoid an attack next turn. It just feels really bad for some reason, even though it's kind of what you have to do with it sometimes. In the same vein, Flying Knee was also pretty good for me. Not a lot of damage, but even just having one more damage after Wraith Form can be really nice. 
and Alchemize was amazing. It combined with some of my relics to be absolutely perfect, and this actually might have won me the run. I have to go back and watch the tape, but strong, strong card here. Relic-wise, Runic Pyramid was great for keeping a hold of Wraith Form in my hand. If I didn't have energy, I could just hold on to it. If I wasn't getting attacked yet, I could just hold on to it, and then I could use it when I wanted. This is why Runic Pyramid is good to begin with in any case, but especially when you've got a very expensive card that has a niche or perhaps a very specific set of circumstances where you might want to use it, having Runic Pyramid to hold it in your hand and just keep it there until that exact moment, super, super valuable. The relic I just talked about with Alchemize was of course Toy Ornithopter. Five healing isn't a lot, but it is a lot when you are only taking one damage. So the idea was, I don't even need to block. I can just use Wraith Form, take the damage, use a potion, heal the damage, and then get a new potion with Alchemize. And it just kept going like that. So without further ado, let's just jump into the run and see how it played out. We are picking up the Time Eater fight from turn two. First turn, I just played some powers and setups. Now I'm stuck in a situation where I feel like I need to play Wraith Form, even though I have other things I wanna do. And I'm worried that it's gonna put me on a timer and I'm gonna run out of time before my dex gets too low. Looking back, Leg Sweep may have been okay to just take a little damage, mostly block and get weak, but didn't happen in this run. I tried to edit out some of the longest pauses, but I want to leave this one in here for just a bit. Play the accuracy because that's super important. Getting in that in play is number one priority with a Shiv's deck. I'm hovering here for a long time without tacking because I'm really, really double checking my time eater card math. I want to get rid of as many cards out of my hand as possible and hopefully end exactly on 12, which we are able to do here. I'm also thinking about my Liquid Memories potion. Liquid Memories does lose a little bit of shine to it when you have Runic Pyramid and you're already holding probably your best cards in your hand. So I am a little careful about the cards I play and what gets put into the discard pile. So when I really need something really good, I can reach into that discard pile and get it at the right time. Mostly just really want to hold on to all of these potions because they're really good. I do have the Alchemize, but sometimes the devil you know is better than the one you don't. And all of these potions I think would be really useful for the heart. So I don't want to spend too many of them unless I need to use the Toy Ornithopter to heal. Now you are probably beginning to see the big problem with Wraith Form in that if you use it very early, you're going to run out of decks quite quickly and you won't be able to block. I believe I have minus three or minus four decks now, a little hard to see through the video editor. Luckily, I do have a second Wraith Form in my back pocket. Didn't play it there because he's not attacking this turn, so I want to get in as much damage, hopefully get him close to half so I can burst him down during the three turn duration of my second Wraith form. At this point, I am very worried that I'm not going to be able to get back to that Wraith form. So I'm going to get a couple of quick attacks in and then use that potion to go for the discarded calculated gamble. 
get that Wraith form back into my hand. I get a Phantasmal Killer for double damage next round. So now I'm just trying to get that potion back and get ready to focus fire this Time Slug down as fast as possible. One small struggle that I did have was trying to clear enough hand space to actually play my blade dances, but by the time I did have them, it was all over for Time Slug. We are picking up Shield and Spear on turn two. I have another really, really long pause here. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my potions. I kind of want to heal but I'm having a hard time figuring out what to keep, what not to keep. And I ended up going with the worst possible option, I think. And I ended up just getting rid of this fear potion for no reason. I don't know why I didn't use it at the very least to take the artifact charge off of spear. That would actually help me a lot on the next turn. I think I was just getting a little stressed out and flustered at the end of the run and really hyper focused on using that corpse explosion charge to deal as much damage to spear as I could kind of hurt me on turn three because I can't use this or sorry kind of hurt me here on turn two because I can't use this weak potion to reduce any of this incoming damage. I just have to eat it. A little unnecessary extra setup for next turn with Wraith Form and Phantasmal Killer, but I did want to get a little heal off there with the weak potion going into the heart fight. And with the damage that we're doing, we don't really need to do very much. All we have to do is keep on surviving. Don't have a ton of block in hand, but with intangible, you don't need it either. Turn one of the heart fight, very simple. I just wanna get set up. So I'm gonna play my powers, get a little block for next turn, get my terror and phantasmal killer, and that's it. At the beginning, I said Alchemize may have won it, and probably just for that potion alone. After Image, allowing me to deal with the beat of death and not play cards until I kill myself, was basically the only reason I won this. I don't think it would have been possible without that After Image. I didn't really spend any time planning ahead for the heart, which was a major error on my part, and if I didn't get that after image, I don't think it would have worked out for me. The big attacks he's doing right now in the first cycle, I felt like I could not block with Wraith form. I felt like the fight was probably going to go on too long. And I didn't really have any other good sources of block before after image. After image is really nice because it gives you block that does not scale off of your decks. So now that I do have it, I can feel pretty safe to play the Wraith form anytime I want because I know when I do play it, I can block the Beat of Death and any kind of damage that is coming in will be taken care of by the number of cards I play, not the dexterity that I don't have. Here you can see why Outmaneuver was so valuable. Six energy, I can play at least one of my Wraith forms. Don't think I'm gonna need both of them, but at least one of them. And then still have plenty of other energy to get rid of cards out of my hand. That's another thing we need to worry about is with those big expensive cards, if you've got Runic Pyramid and you spend a whole turn playing one three cost card, your hand is gonna fill very, very quickly, especially if you're facing an enemy like the Heart that is gonna insert wounds or other status cards into your deck.
The last turn was pretty basic, but now we have lots of energy to play with. So we are going to use this leg sweep to help remove some artifact charges, get some energy and some power for next turn, and hopefully be able to do lots of damage. Now we're in the second half of this fight. There's the before Wraith form half and the after Wraith form half. So now we're in the after Wraith form half, and it is very much a race. I am quickly losing my dexterity, and I need to end this fight ASAP. Here you can see the danger of using Calculated Gamble to get rid of your Wraith form. I don't have it on a turn I really need it, but thankfully I do have just enough block to make sure that this isn't completely lethal. Otherwise, the trade that we did one Wraith form for about 125 damage looks real silly. I've pointed out some of my mistakes, but I think here I do want to go ahead and pat myself on the back for something I did do well. I kept one of those shivs in hand after playing Phantasmal Killer last turn, hoping that the double damage would help me finish off the heart, and it is what made the difference. Having that third attack makes finisher lethal, and the heart is dead. Alright, now that we've been through the run, let's go take a look at some missing pieces. One of the cards that I really would have loved to have had that run would have been Blur. The idea of gaining lots of block before you start losing dexterity to Wraith form is really cool. Also, just being able to build block over two turns is really cool. I think that would have been very, very helpful for dealing with the multi-attacks especially. Uh, even with Wraith form or other forms of un in tangible, not untangible, intangible, the multi-attacks times 15 can still hurt you. So being able to do a little bit of blocking is still necessary, even with Wraith form. I think another good source of small block that works really well in decks with apparitions or Wraith form or other forms of intangible would be escape plan. Just having three block is really, really nice. Of course, like we said, after image is another great source of small block. And even more importantly, it does not scale off of your decks. So this will always be plus one block for every card. Doesn't matter. Very, very nice when paired with Wraith Form. Because of the high cost of Wraith Form, I think something like Bullet Time would be fantastic. Especially if you've already got a Runic Pyramid and you can get a really big hand. That would be really nice. But even without it, if you could just get a Bullet Time into your hand at the same time as Wraith Form, then that would really negate any of the cost that it has as far as, well, if I play Wraith Form, I don't have enough energy for anything else. Bullet Time solves that. And finally, Nightmare. You can do a lot of really silly things with Nightmare. And with enough copies of Wraith Form, you know what? You don't even need the block, to be fair. If you can get nine turns of intangible, I'm sure at some point you'll find a window where you can attack and you'll be able to get through it with negative 25 dexterity. Doesn't matter. Now let's talk about some relics that could be really, really good with Wraith form that I unfortunately didn't have for this run, but you should definitely keep an eye out for in your run. Anchor or any of the boat relics or really any of the block relics. They are great for freeing up energy, letting you use your attacks or your powers, and they are decent sources of block. 10 block, 15, you know, something like that. Even six from Ori Calcum, even if it's just four from something like Ornamental Fan, any of those block relics can be very, very useful. As I just mentioned, if you're not going to be playing lots of defense, then 
Ori Calcum is a great card for when you are intangible and taking very little damage. Mummified Hand would be good. You still have to spend the three energy, but at least you get to play something else for free after that. Thread and Needle, just like in our Ironclad video we did last week, will similarly be very valuable here. Even though it's only four block, that's still more than enough when you've got intangible. Of course, Tungsten Rod, super valuable here. It can take you from just needing a little block to just needing zero block. There are a couple of shop relics you should definitely be looking out for. Number one being orange pellets. As long as you have enough energy to also play attacks and skills after Wraith form, you are going to be very happy because it will be all positives and no negatives. Artifact charges are very, very valuable. Though I did choose the seed and the run that I showed today specifically because they didn't appear. I think it's a no brainer if you've got orange pellets to take a wraith form, but it's a lot more challenging and I think good to learn from a run where you take a wraith form and you don't have artifact charges. Similarly, you can also get artifacts from Clockwork Souvenir, another shop relic. And you can even get artifact charges from the colorless card, Panacea, usually and most often available, not usually, but most often available in shops and some events. So keep an eye out for it. Finally, potions that I think could be useful. We've said it before, but obviously any source of block that is not based on your decks is very nice. So having something like a block potion is great even counteracting the dexterity loss with the dex potion could be really good. Extra energy to play more cards or just get your wraith form off is very nice. Another way to possibly get the wraith form for free could be through discarding it and calling it back with liquid memories. Or if you've gotten really deep into your draw pile and there's not much left, Maybe you could get it for free with a distilled chaos. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope that this video has been informative and helpful. And I hope that the next time you see Wraith form, you can take it and confidently use it to beat that heart. As always, leave a like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you real soon. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching Ruckus Gaming.